All right, so this is, I believe, part three on circulatory system. So, okay, uh, types of blood vessels, artery, capillaries, veins. Artery from the heart to the body. Veins to the heart from the body. Okay, um, so we have two kinds of circulation. Uh, so this single, circula cir single circulation, this is the kind of circulation that fishes, rays, and sharks have. Basically, Pisces or yeah, marine marine animals, certain marine animals, if not all. And for double circulation, uh, I believe humans have this kind of circulation among other species. Um, okay, so let's start first with single circulation. So slow pace compensated by swimming movement. So yeah, this is associated with swimming since most of the species that have the circulation swim. And the heart has two chambers, the atrium and the ventricle. So um, a basic uh, flow chart regarding how it happens is basically it starts with the blood going to the heart and to the gills. This is uh, where O2 is absorbed and CO2 is let out. So if, we, if humans have lungs, we have gills they have gills and uh, the blood is then uh, distributed to the organs and tissues of the body and then they go back to the heart so that's it for double circulation uh, literally from the word double circulation happens twice so third circuits are combined into the heart um, amphibians reptiles mammals have this kind of circulation they exhibit this kind of circulation we have pulmonary circuit um, capillary beds, lungs, and skin, pulmocutaneous circuit, uh, capillaries, lungs, and skin. So yes, um, pulmonary circuit is exclusive for reptiles and mammals. Pulmocutaneous circuit is exclusive for amphibians. And okay, uh, systemic circuit is the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen and the exchange of nutrient and the waste products. Uh, O2 per blood returns to the heart in this kind of circuit. So, at the right side of the heart, uh, the liver O2 per blood goes to the um, gas exchange tissues. So, um, yeah, uh, the right side is basically um, the right atrium, the right ventricle, and the tricuspid valve. So, where um, O2 is uh, this is where O2 goes in and CO2 goes out. And at the left side of the heart, this is the destination of the now O2-rich blood. And that eventually uh, goes to the parts of the body through organs and tissues. Contraction of the heart propels blood to capillaries all over the body. So remember that the left ventricle holds the maximum pressure, the highest pressure, since it's capable, it's responsible for delivering uh, blood to the rest of the body. So, yeah, um, just to add to that, in reference to what I said previously. So before the aortic valve, we have the left ventricle. The left ventricle is the strongest because um, it holds the highest pressure. It's needed to pump the blood to the entire body. Okay, so, all right, let's start with the first. So I believe this is the um, right ventricle. Uh, and then, so from the atrium to the ventricle, uh, right atrium to the right ventricle. And then this is the tricuspid, is it the tricuspid valve? Where is the tricuspid valve? I think it's this. If I'm not wrong, I hope I'm not wrong. Um, number two, uh, it travels to the basically the respiratory system first, and then back to the heart, and then it goes to the left side of the heart, the left atrium, and then there's another valve here, and then the left ventricle. The left ventricle holds the highest pressure, and eventually the blood will go through the aortic valve, which is this one, and then aorta and to the rest of the body. Capillaries of the head and forelimbs, 
and um, it goes to the capillaries of the abdominal organs and the hind limbs over here. So yes, um, afterwards, uh, here in the blood that is intended to go to the head and forelimbs, um, it becomes a vein uh, connecting the um, arteries that are supposed to have already um, distributed the blood to the tissues. Um, the capillaries are also connected to veins, uh, particularly the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Superior for the blood that goes to the head and four limbs and inferior vena cava for blood that goes through the abdominal organs and the hind limbs. So yeah, through the vena cava they enter uh, this part which is the right atrium and through the tricuspid valve um, goes to the right ventricle and then yeah. Um, let me correct myself. I'm not sure if I labeled the valves correctly. But uh, um, yeah, let's let's make it right. Okay, so let's bring this here. Okay, so right atrium is over here, and then this one yeah this is the tricuspid valve so right atrium to the right ventricle and then right ventricle to the what's this called pulmonary artery so this is the art this is the artery where blood um the oxygenated blood travels to this is the pulmonary valve connecting the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery uh this is the only artery that works like a vein and uh, in the same in a similar scenario analogically the pulmonary vein is the only vein that's labeled or colored red here since uh even though it um okay uh yeah um What is the function of the pulmonary vein? So yes, um, I believe after the blood goes to um, the pulmonary artery to the lungs and then the capillaries in the lungs uh, delivering oxygen to the blood, it goes back to the blood, it goes back to the heart through the pulmonary veins. Uh, these veins are supposed to um, carry oxygenated blood. Although they're called veins, they carry oxygenated blood. So, yeah. Um, the veins and arteries with the adjective pulmonary, uh, just remember that their functions are opposite of the normal. If arteries are usually known to carry um, oxygen-rich blood, the pulmonary artery is the only one that doesn't. It carries something that's the opposite, which is deoxygenated and pulmonary vein it carries oxygenated blood although it's a vein usually veins carry deoxygenated so yeah um pulmonary vein uh particularly here this is also pulmonary vein it goes through uh the left atrium which is this it's the upper region and then through the mitral valve it goes to the left ventricle this is where there's a lot of pressure. The left ventricle is responsible for pumping um, the blood to the rest of the body. That's why it's, it has a lot of pressure and it needs a lot of strength. And through the aortic valve and through the aorta, then it exits. So this part of the aorta um, is the source of blood for the head and the forelimbs, our arms. And yeah, uh, the aorta from below is responsible for delivering blood to this part of our body, the lower region, the inferior region, uh, I suppose. Okay, so we're done with 
the uh, with the circulatory system. You know what? Let's work on this first. It's a cardiovascular diseases. Uh, in the previous video, I wasn't able to show this. I'll be showing it now. And after this, we'll be moving on to respiratory system. So let's start with high blood pressure. In other words, this is called hypertension. Blood pressure is the force that pushes blood against the walls. So yeah, um, a normal blood pressure. Blood pressure is important, but it is not supposed to be too low or too high. So there's a particular reading that um, translates to normal, but I won't show that now. Um, what are the affected organs in hypertension? Arteries, the heart, the kidneys, the eyes, and the brain. So, yeah, naturally these are easy to um, connect with the idea of hypertension, the arteries and the heart. Although, yeah, I'm not sure why kidneys are here, as well as uh, veins. Well, I'm not sure why veins are not mentioned here, but kidneys are mentioned. But anyways. What are the main causes of high blood pressure? Too much salt? Um, I suppose high blood pressure is, uh, is directly associated or related with um, kidney problems in a way that kidney problems are triggered by the consumption of too much salt. And yeah, pregnancy, um, even if you're healthy, there's still a chance of having hypertension if you're pregnant, if women are pregnant. If you're physically unfit, if you don't exercise enough, uh, if you consume too much alcohol or caffeine, um, you tend to experience episodes of palpitations. Um, you, you smoke, uh, you damage your lungs, and as well as the heart. You are stressed, of course. That's uh, a good reason for high blood pressure. What are the medicines? We have steroids, contraceptive pills, uh, intended for birth control, uh, although this is not ethical in certain practices uh, that are established on religious beliefs. Um, and we have non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs or NSAIDs. What are the complications for high blood pressure? We have kidney disease or infection, uh, we have diabetes, sleep, sleep apnea, and lupus. Lupus is an autoimmune disorder. Uh, your own immune system is attacking your body. It's, a di it's one heck of a disease. For symptoms, we have severe headaches or dizziness. We have stroke, nausea or vomiting, chest pain, it's hard to breathe, nosebleed, and kidney failure. So kidney failure, if it's, too, it's somehow too late, that's usually the problem that arises. So, uh, let's go with diagnosis. You can diagnose high blood pressure if you have something that's called the sphygmum, the sphygmum monitor. And for the blood pressure, um, this is basically the chart, the reading that um, says what kind of blood pressure is normal and what is not. So. Normal is systolic and diastolic. I mentioned these earlier. In the, I mean, in the previous videos. Uh, normal, less than 120. Diastolic, less than 80. Elevated, 120 to 129. Diastolic, less than 80. So, this from this point, if you measure your blood pressure to be these readings, to be close at least to these readings, then you should um, consider changing your lifestyle. Um, because after that, if it increases, um, this is already hypertension, stage 1. And anything higher than that is going to be stage 2. And anything higher than the readings uh, associated with stage 2 is going to be, well, not stage 3. It's already called hypertensive crisis. So, yeah, it's not good. Next, atherosclerosis. It basically or primarily affects the arteries. And so... The hardening of the arteries, uh, this is the hardening of the arteries that reduces blood flow and oxygen supply. Reduces and ultimately, uh, in worst case scenarios, blood flow is uh, impeded significantly. This is because or due to the buildup of plaque in the inner lining of the artery. What are the symptoms? We have stroke, chest pain, shortness of breath, 
erectile dysfunction you cannot it's difficult to be erect um you have fatigue dizziness lower back pain painful numb and cold hands and feet so what is the diagnosis so we have uh, to undergo blood tests um in the, in this kind of dig, uh, diagnostic solution um you basically find blood with high fat and cholesterol levels if your blood is found to um, be high in these then yeah uh, you have a good chance of having atherosclerosis another way of diagnosing um, is through an electrocardiogram so you detect atheroimminence um, in an irregular heart rhythm and we have echocardiography you find abnormalities in blood flow and muscle contraction for treatment what do we what do we do we exercise we have we change your lifestyle um, to a more healthy one we um, we undergo angioplasty I think this is a, a kind of surgery that intends to basically um, remove the buildup of plague it's something like this So uh, yeah, um, something very thin is inserted through the artery, and it inflates from inside. It's a it's a kind of balloon, and yeah. Um, the 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 basically the roadblock is removed. Um, roadblock is an easy term to describe. Uh, atherosclerosis, and that roadblock is made of primarily fats and bad cholesterol what are the medications wait before that uh we have fibrinolytic therapy i'm not sure about that but it's a treatment uh what are the medications we have anticoagulants antiplatelets and metformin uh, anticoagulants are responsible for slowing down blood synthesis uh they're in other words blood synthesis. sorry it's kind of nice 